We've been thinking these past few Sundays about Jesus Christ, our hero. Someone you look up to, someone you admire. That's what a hero is. And we all have heroes along the way, and all the heroes that we have, they're human heroes. Well, sooner or later, they will let us down. They just won't measure up. But Jesus Christ is the hero that never, ever fails. So we've been thinking about him as the bravest, smartest, most powerful person that's ever lived. And this morning, about the strongest person. But before we actually get to the text, there's a question for you there in your sermon. I hope you have your sermon guide there because you kind of need that because a um, little test there. Because it begins out with a question that says, uh, can you connect the dots? Can you connect the dots? Now, you think, ah, that's a strange thing. And uh, let me tell you a story behind this. Um, probably about 25 years ago, I just started teaching the seminary. And um, I was, you know, kind of hurried and pressed and pressured and so forth. And so I was probably griping to my boss. And he said, Calvin, you need to learn how to connect the dots. And I was like, What? Well, he just said, no, 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 connect these dots. I thought, well, I don't know what he means. You know, so he had a napkin there, and he put these dots just like on the screen there. He said, you just need to learn to connect the dots. And I was like, wow, well, that don't make any sense to me. He said, it's very simple. Look what happens when you connect the dots. Here's what he's teaching me. No. A lot of your problems, he said, wouldn't be problems if you learned to say no. And we have a really hard time. We think about Jesus Christ being the strongest man. We think about character, and we're really thinking about his ability to say no. We have a hard time saying no, but Jesus can, and Jesus does. And so think about Jesus Christ, the strongest man that ever lived. Not about physical strength, those kinds of things, but we're thinking about strength of character. His bravery, he moved into the areas that were very dangerous. And he was smart enough to deal with the people. And he had a lot of power, meaning influence. But now the strength of character and, and strength he wants to give to us. And so we begin to think about Jesus Christ, the strongest man in the who really had the ability to connect the dots and to say no. So we look at several passages to see this demonstrated. We begin in Matthew chapter 4. We actually there a couple weeks ago when we talked about Christ, the bravest man that ever lived, because he faced Satan head to head. But in Matthew chapter 4, um, he is uh, up there alone, been 40 days of fasting alone uh, with God, and then the end, Satan comes to tempt him. And we read in chapter 4 of Matthew, verse 2 at the end, he became hungry, and the tempter came and said to him, if you're the son of God, command that these stones be made into bread. <laughs> So the command was this, eat. You're hungry, eat. Now after 40 days, <coughs> he was hungry. And, and you think about this, how do you do with this? I mean, how well are you at, at saying no to a simple thing like the dessert buffet? I mean, you go back in the Fellowship Hall, we have this incredible spread before us, all this food. You, you've eaten quite enough. You're not really hungry. You're really satisfied. But you pass by the dessert table and like, what do you say? Oh, one of these and one of these and one of these. We tend to say yes, don't we? A simple thing like food. I mean, the strength of character to say no to a simple food temptation. Remember a man we once knew, I used to watch him, every time there was a covered dish dinner, he'd go through the line, he would take a moderate serving of the items he wanted, he never, and I do mean never, went back for seconds. He had a discipline that was just incredible. But that is rather rare, as most of us can demonstrate right? We don't say no. But here's Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. After 40 days of fasting, and it says he's hungry, and, and Satan comes and says, hey, you know, you're hungry? <laughs> take this bread and, and, and take this bread and make it and these rocks and make them into up to bread. You can do that. And Jesus said, no. He connected the dots and said no. I won't do that. There was more going on here than just satisfying his physical appetite. 
There's a spiritual dynamic behind all this. <coughs> Excuse me. But, but the point is, he was strong enough in character to say, no, I will not do this. That's unique. Now, some people have the ability to say no to a, a simple temptation like food. But then it goes on in the same passage, and uh, it says in verse 5 that Satan took him up on a high place and a pinnacle and said, throw yourself down, because uh, God will give his angels charge over you. In a sense, he's saying, prove yourself. Prove you really are who you claim to be. Prove it. <laughs> Demonstrate who you really are. Now, it had been a very significant demonstration, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, cast off a big high pinnacle and, and not be killed. It would have proved something. How often we're tempted to want to prove something. <laughs> prove that we're a, a man of certain character or a woman of certain quality, that we can do certain things. I dare you and we buy into the challenge. But when Jesus was tempted and was challenged to do something, to prove himself, his answer was no. Once again, he connected the dots. He had enough internal character and strength to say no to doing that which was not what the Father had for him. And so again, we have in Matthew chapter 4 that uh, Satan took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, there in verse 8, and he said, I'll give you all these things. Fall down and worship me. <laughs> You know, here is Satan saying, you know what? You can have it all. You can have it all. I'll give it to you. Now, Satan was known as the God of this world and maybe had a lot to give. But he's saying to Jesus, you can have it all. If, you just, if you'll just bow down here, very simple little thing, you can have it all. And how do we do with uh, have it all schemes during Christmas season? Perhaps one of the worst seasons of all for scammers. And they're, they're, they have all these, these ways to, to get things, free things, and, and uh, how to get rich quick. And all those things go around us. You can have it all. Or we're tempted to sacrifice a lot of personal important things for economic gain or for fame or status or whatever. And here's Satan saying to Satan, you can have it all. <laughs> I give it to you, it's free. <laughs> and Jesus said, No. No, I won't go there. The power of Christ, the internal character, the strength to say no. And in every phase of life, us humans have a horrible time saying no. It may be saying no to a simple thing like food. It may be saying no to squandering our time. It may be saying no to a, a sexual temptation or lust. It may be, it may be not saying no to, to prove yourself. Uh, that you really are who you claim to be. It may be resisting saying no to quick, rich, get rich, quick schemes and so forth. Here is strength of character. Jesus connected the dots. He said no. It takes a strong person of character to do that. Some of us will do okay on one or two of these, but consistently have this kind of character. In John chapter 16, there's another little incident that takes place there. Here's where uh, Jesus has just fed 5,000 people. <laughs> that's, a, that's a red letter day, right? He didn't do that every day. And certainly the people who were fed had not had that kind of an experience. Can you imagine sitting in the grass and they get them all divided up by 50s, you know, and then begin to, to pass out the five loaves and two fishes and on it goes and it just keeps multiplying and multiplying and, and then they're all satisfied and they gather up more than they had when they started with. This is a pretty significant thing. And in John chapter 6, we read about the response of the people. John chapter 6 and verse 15. It says this, so Jesus, perceiving, understanding, recognizing that they were intending to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew to a lonely place by himself. Can you imagine what Donald Trump would say <laughs> or Hillary Clinton if we said, we're going to make you president? 
and they would just ride off into the sunset? I don't think so. <laughs> Wouldn't do that. Here is, the, here is Jesus Christ came. He came to be the Messiah. He came to be the Savior. The, the one day the king that was set on the throne of David, and now after this as high water mark of popular, the polls were really up at this point in time. And the people, we want you to be our king. We're going to make you our king. That's a strong temptation, isn't it? How would you respond? Man, this was what we call a, a shortcut, which really would not have been a shortcut, but it might appear to be so. But as they came to make him king, although without saying the words, I just kind of got the picture. The crowds were all there, and then he just kind of walked right through them and went off. <laughs> he refused to do this. They wanted to make him king, and he said, I can't hear you. No, I will not. This is not the way that I become the king to sit up on the throne of David. This is a shortcut, and the answer is no. That's character. I mean, it's really hard. Think of how many times we do things because, because we're kind of pressured into it. You know, I mean, God, he's supposed to people felt. I mean, he is, he like, he, he's like turning his back on them. He's like kind of putting them down. He's like not following them. There's a lot of pressure here. No, I won't become your king. You won't make me king. That's not the venue, not the direction that the Lord Jesus Christ had. See, you think back on this, you know. The strength of character it takes to say no. To be really hungry and to be offered food and say no. To be presenting yourself as the Messiah and be tempted to prove yourself and to say no. That strength of character. To have it all offered to you. <laughs> just bow down. You can just bypass this cross stuff and dying. All that. I'll just give it to you. No. To be very popular. And the masses saying, be our king. And say, no. The strength of character. How do you think we do there? I think you would do there. I mean, we have a hard time. Mark chapter 10. The uh, disciples are arguing in Mark 10, just before the passage we'll read here. They were arguing about who is the, the most important person in God's kingdom. And uh, Jesus began to teach them, and he taught them in Mark 10, 41 to 45, that, that God's great people serve others. And he says, for even the Son of Man, at the end of Mark 10, 10 45, for even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. How many of you like being served? <laughs> Isn't it nice when someone brings you things, bring you breakfast in bed, bring you a new car, bring you this, bring you that? Just bring it on. You know? It's a great thing to be served. And in the world economy, the world system, there, if, if you're an important people, you are served by others. And the more who serve you, the higher your rank, right? And so here's a chance, you know, and here's Jesus, the Son of God. He had every right to say, you serve me, yet he washed the disciples' feet. He served them the Last Supper. He did not come to be served, but to serve, give his life a ransom for many. And the temptation would be, be served, and he says, no, no. That's not where I want to be. That's pretty strong character, isn't it? I mean, to stand up against that kind of, of encouragement or temptation or offer, say, no, I won't do that. In Matthew chapter 16, there's another incident. We see this strength of character. In Matthew chapter 16, uh, Jesus has been asking the disciples, who do people say that I am? There was a lot of questions about who Jesus was. And uh, some said he's this or that, and then, and then Jesus kind of pressed, well, who do you say that I am? And here's where Peter says, well, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. We believe that you are the Messiah. Now, we understand, if we think about Jesus, 
he is the fulfillment of many, many years, centuries of prophetic promise. He didn't just kind of show up in that little manger one day accidentally. There had been years and years, centuries, where the prophets of the Old Testament said, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. And at the appointed time, Jesus was born. The Son of God became man as a baby in a manger. He grew up, became the one who died upon the cross. It's a part of the large plan. If you can visualize the, the, the birth of Christ, the manger, and see over that manger scene the shadow of a cross, you'd be perceiving it correctly. Because that's what happened. And so here now, Jesus is saying, as he's become a man here in Matthew chapter 16, and uh, now his followers are saying, yes, you're the Christ. And so uh, in verse 17, Jesus said to Simon bar Peter here, uh, who said, you're the Christ, he said, you did not uh, get this on your own, but the Father in heaven revealed this to you. Then he goes on to talk about himself. And then Jesus said, you know, um, um, from that time on, verse 21, Jesus began to share his, with his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. Now here's the bravery coming up again. Here's the resolve. So I must go to Jerusalem. And I must be scourged. And I must be crucified. And I must be raised again. I don't know if the disciples heard the last must. <laughs> But this was his bravery, his courage, but his strength. He resolved, I must go to Jerusalem, and I will. I must be scourged, and I will. And I must be crucified, and I will. And I must be raised, and I will. But when Peter heard this, Peter took him aside. In verse 22, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, yeah, that this should ever happen to you. No, no. Dear our Lord, our Jesus, our Master, our Savior, no, you cannot do this. <laughs> and Jesus said to him, he said, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block for me. You're not setting your mind on, thing, on God's interests, but man's. Peter was saying, avoid your date with death. And Jesus said, no. 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 He connected the dots. But think about this. All kinds of shortcuts. All kinds of ways to circumvent the plan of God. But his character, his strength, no. It says he Another place, he, he set his eyes resolute, I am going to Jerusalem. And he knew exactly what would happen there. The disciples and others may have been shocked and surprised, but Jesus wasn't. And all the attempts to circumvent, to do things differently, even things that sounded really good, Jesus connected the dots, and he said no. Now, do we understand clearly that as being people in Christ Jesus, Christ living in us, he gives us the character, the power, if we'll, let, if we'll tap into it, to also connect the dots? He modeled for us. For we too in Christ Jesus can say no. So, how does your strength, as the sermon notes have there, how does your strength and those around you compare to the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ? How good are you? How good are those around about you at saying no to these kinds of opportunities? That takes character. Strong character. He said no to the temptation to eat. He said no to the temptation to prove himself. He said no to the temptation to have it all. He said no to the 
push to make him king. He said no to the desire to be served. He said no to the temptation to avoid death. That's courage. And that's our Savior. That's one of the reasons we think about Jesus Christ being our hero. In your sermon notes, there's a review of the series. You may have missed a few, so here's a quick synopsis. Jesus, as the bravest man that ever lived, lived courageously, embraced being a helpless babe. He ch- we never choose where we'd be born. We didn't choose any of that stuff. But he did, the eternal son of God. With courage, he stared down the devil. With courage, he submitted to the cross. Jesus Christ, the bravest man that ever lived. Jesus Christ, the smartest man. He outwitted the intelligence of his day. He read the hearts and minds of people. And he amazed the masses with his teaching. They'd never heard anybody teach like this ever before. Really, it's a great chagrin to the Pharisees and scribes. Jesus Christ, the most powerful man that ever lived. As we read last week, is that time is marked around his birth, before Christ and after Christ. No man has ever so influenced history as the Lord Jesus Christ has. The influence of our lives, individual lives. In this room, many people here have been influenced by this man who was born, who lived, who died, who was raised. No one's ever had the influence that Jesus Christ has had and the strength to possess the inner resolve to march on. So we think about Jesus Christ being our hero. These are some of the reasons why. This Jesus not only wants to be your Savior, but also the Lord that empowers you, his followers. And he wants to let you in on this, being brave and smart, influential and strong, to give you these things. The questions in your notes there, is Jesus your hero that you are seeking to follow? What have you done with him? I mean, what, what, what are you doing with Jesus today? Well, he was an interesting figure, historical person, and that he was for sure. But if he is who he claimed to be, he's more than just a historical figure. He's a living, risen Savior. Believing in him, trusting in him. This is not the question, well, sometime in your past, did you pray a prayer or something like that? No, today, are you believing and trusting in Jesus Christ as a son of God who lived and died and rose again for your sin? That's the question. Now, not about the past, the present, right now. What are you believing about him? And realizing he wants to, he wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you forgiveness. He wants to give you bravery and encouragement. He wants to give you heavenly wisdom. He wants to give you power and influence. He wants to give you internal strength. He wants to share that. He is a generous Savior, and he waits for us to be found trusting and living in him. Are you learning in Christ to say no to the world and yes to God? Final answer. Final answer, my Jesus, my response to Jesus is, I hope it's yes. A lot of things we need to say no to. But say yes to Jesus. Be found trusting in him. So our Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would convince every one of us in this room that Jesus Christ is worthy of being a true, true hero and a savior. And I pray you'll find us believing and trusting him today. Father, I pray, Lord, it's hard sometimes as we try to think it through and to come to, to really be trusting you. And I pray for those here this morning who are trying to figure it out. Holy Spirit of God, even this very moment, would you be pleased 
to impress upon them in a supernatural way that Jesus really is who he claimed to be and give the grace to be found loving and trusting you and believing you right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for who you are and all that you've done. Amen.